So I would like to have a modest proposal for a, her um, a heresy of a key value store, or NoSQL part three. Um, I've been playing with storage and NoSQL and cloud computing for a while. Um, I'm an open source and, st um, and standards, adv standards advocate. I've been a community manager. I'm the Drizzle DB merge steward. Please hire me. Um, but as I've been um, playing with all this stuff, I've been having ideas for how we could do storage and NoSQL sort of things better. This is actually the third in a series. Brian Akers kicked this off at OpenSQL Camp here in Portland a couple of years ago. And then I made a response to the MySQL conference this year, and I've been thinking a little bit more, and I have this. NoSQL is a term that covers a whole bunch of patterns. I have the list here. My favorite one is the key value store because it's the most approachable. Ordinary programmers can use it. These other three, the document, the graph, the big table, they're usable but hard. My favorite key value stores are InnoDB, which really is a key value store. Um, Memcached, I love it for its speed. I like Redis because I can change what's in it. I like S3 type things because they are permanent. They keep my data. As I've been thinking what I want a key value store to do, I want one that's optimized for real hardware. I want it to be able to take advantage of the things that real disks can do, fast I.O., and random writes. Um, I've cherry-picked out some of the features I like from other key value stores. Um, the most important thing I want is as usable by ordinary program programmers with a simple API. And I'm going to be describing some of these things that I want. The first thing I want is I want no latency. This is, I named this after myself. Computers are getting better faster than the speed of light is getting faster. <laughs> so latency is the killer. So he, here are the things that add latency. And so I want to get rid of all of them for mine. No XML, no JSON, no REST, no HTTP, no structured data, and no networking. No networking. This, that's the her, um, part that's the heresy. So instead, I want it implemented in kernel. The API can use syscalls. I think it'll only take about six syscalls to do this in. And a neat little half IPC mechanism I've been thinking of, where you put your data in a buffer and hand it to the kernel, and it doesn't have to come out to another process. I want these things called namespaces. I got the idea from SQL. I got it from S3 of being able to keep my data in, instead of having it all in one top namespace, being able to chunk it down into smaller pieces so I can get to what I want. A namespace would be just a simple ASCII string, easy and simple, easy to store, easy to remember, easy to type, no complex data again. Um, possibly a separator, I'm not sure yet. Now a namespace can contain objects and more namespaces. And I can nest this all the way down um, a set of namespaces could get pretty long, but I figure it'll only go about six or seven deep worst, and with the separator, it should be pretty easy to read. Now, an object would just be a byte stream with a name. I got this idea from S3 and also the way Memcache does it. Instead of fancy structured objects and figuring out how to handle all that, byte streams can handle anything I want. Most NoSQL systems have really crappy access control systems, if they have one at all. Um, the one for S3 is reasonably OK. Um, since this is built into the kernel, I could use the process ID to access it. Now, here's the thing that I like the most, and this is the thing I like from Redis the most, is mutatable objects. All the other key, key value stores, once I write the object to change it, I have to read it back, change it, and write it out again. This is slow. So my idea is, since this is just a byte stream, I should be able to write at any offset any new value of bytes to the object. This is fast, this is straightforward, you can, lay, you can write any application to do this and you can explain it to programmers. One of the other cool things, I don't need any fancy locking systems. Many processes could write to the same object at the same time because the kernel knows everything about what's going on. It can figure out who's all writing to it, what's being written to. I had a couple more crazy ideas for this thing. Um, I think the craziest one is putting a network access protocol back on it, but I don't think anyone could ever get that to work right. Um, and um, baking it into every language. That'll be a lot of work, but I think it could be done. Thank you very much, and I think this will work.
Can I give away the secret for those who might not have gotten it? Does everybody get the running joke? Maybe. File system, exactly. He, Mark just defined for us the file system.